So this is our second video in the trait care suctioning uh, section. One of the things I uh, went and got while I was making sure that I had all my materials is I did get the pulse oximeter for a patient. Because when we're doing suctioning, we want to make sure that our, we're monitoring our patient's stats the entire time. Uh, this way, if they, have, they are deoxygenated, we can tell. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on my patient right now before I get any of my suction equipment set up. All right, so we've got that on. Um, Miss Anita here. Of course, before I perform any kind of procedure on a patient, I make sure that I have my order. I've already checked my order with the armband of our patient and explained what we're going to do. We have a working relationship already, so I performed ate it multiple times coming in and out of the room. So I'm just going to wash my hands and then we're going to get started. So I'm washing my hands and then I'm going to put on my mask. So I mentioned in the first video that you need to have a mask so that you don't get sputum into any of your mucous membranes. So this is really important. Sometimes uh, people can have a lot of copious sputum in their tray or it can suctioning can cause them to want to cough. And we want them to be able to cough. We want them to be able to get the mucus up on their own if possible, uh, but we don't want them to get it up and in our face. So that's why we wear the mask. If your patient was on isolation, contact precautions, you would also wear um, a gown. But for this case, we just need our mask. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And you see this one, this particular mask has a face shield with it because we don't want to get any of that mucus in our eyes either. Um, part of this procedure, we're going to have our patient hyperoxygenated, which is going to require me to have an extra set of hands because my hands are going to be sterile and I'm holding the suction catheter. So Ms. Palmer is here to hyperoxygenate our patient for us. I'm going to get my gloves on. This is, you could be talking to your patient, of course, while you're, you're doing this. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my suction. So you can see my suction is already hooked up here. I just need to make sure that I turn it on. So I'm going to turn it on to regular suction, not intermittent suction. That's when we have like NG tubes. Regular suction is what we need when we're doing our any kind of um, respiratory suctioning. And then I'm going to turn it up so that it's between 80 and 120. So this is nice. The 80 and 120 is yellow on our machines here. So you just want to make sure um, that it's between 80 and 120. That's important for practice and for lab and for test questions, just so you all know. So I've got my suction set up there, and I'm going to test it here with my thumb before I get started. So I'm making sure that the suction works. We want to make sure that before we um, before we do the scale on the patient that we have our suction set up and working correctly because we would hate to put the suction catheter down our patient and not have the suction work. So I've checked that. If you're looking at the bed here you can see I'm set up, I've got my suction ready, and I've got my O2 saturation machine here monitoring my patient. So you can see Miss Anita here has her trait collar on. So the trait collar is on to help like oxygenate her a little bit and maybe keep those mucus, or the, yeah, mucus membranes, I guess you could say, um, but the airway moist. So when we get to that point, I'm going to show you how, with your sterile gloves, you can still move this on and off of the patient. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I have my brand new sterile water, which now I'm going to date and time because I've just opened it up for the first time. If you were going to be using um, one that was already opened, you want to make sure that it's within the 24 hour window and that we lip it prior to using it. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and get my suction catheter tray set up. So like I said, I have two here. And I've got my extra set of gloves. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open this up. So when I open it, I'm going to bring it up to the camera so that you can see the contents of the package. But in practice, we would just open it and set it here. Okay, we wouldn't walk around the room with it because this is sterile inside of our package. But I just want to show you guys what this particular suction catheter kit has in it. And it may vary based on... Um, well, will vary based on the institution that you're working in, but this is what we can expect to have at RGH. However, Hillhaven may be different, just so that you're aware. So you can see I have my sterile gloves in here, which I'm, of course, going to take out to put on here in a minute, and then I have my suction catheter. So you guys are going to be learning about different types of catheters in Skills Lab, and this is, this is, the suction catheter for respiratory suctioning. You can see it's thin and pliable and it has um, the piece that connects to the suction here and then this is how we control our suction. And again I wouldn't be handling this with my bare hands prior to using with a patient but I just want you guys to get familiar with it so that um, you can tell the difference as we're going through and you're learning about all these different skills that you will need as a nurse. Okay, I've also got my extra set of gloves because I never know what's going to happen with the sterile gloves that come with the kit. So, here we go. Taking my gloves out. Ms. Camby, why are you ruffling them up a little bit like that? Well, Miss Palmer, these gloves tend to stick to the yeah. package. Okay. And that I've done help. it more than once where I've had a difficult time getting my gloves off the package um, or the package closing on it and uh, contaminating my sterile field. So I'm just kind of roughing them up so I'll be able to get them out of the package a little okay. bit easier. Okay? Can we do that then? You can. Okay. As long as, because remember, on the outside of this is not sterile. So as long as you're not opening it up and touching inside the sterile package, okay. you can. Okay? okay, great. So I have my sterile gloves there, and I'm going to go ahead and pour my sterile water. So calming it, and then I'm going to pour my liquid here into um, the container. So this sterile water functions... Uh, has two functions. One, it functions as a lubricant for the catheter because um, we don't want to stick a dry catheter down into the airway. Two, our mucus that we're suctioning out of the patient tends to be thick and in between passes we'll need to clean out our catheter and how we're going to do that is we're going to suck up some of this water from the sterile container. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my gloves on. And this is often where I tell students to go ahead and take a look around and make sure they've got everything set up the way they need to have it set up because once you get the sterile gloves on, you can That's only it. touch sterile things. So, yep. and Ms. Camby knows she has everything she needs. So you can see these are even still sticky after I, mm -hmm. after I mess with them there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Again, only grabbing it at the cuff. And then this hand is sterile, so I'm going to go ahead and get this other glove on. Am I scooping it? Yes. That's why Miss Candy can uh, manipulate it a little bit because she's 
but her hand is sterile now, so she can touch the other glove with any part she wants. Yeah. So she can try to get the cuff open by moving her knuckles down, because it is quite sticky. Yeah. So then from there, I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. And of course, you guys all know it's not pretty when you first get those on. Just get them on without contaminating them, and then you can use your sterile hands to get your fit more comfortable. Okay. All right. Now, so now I have two sterile hands. So when we do suctioning, um, and like when we go to do Foley catheters or straight catheters later, you're going to establish which hand is going to be your dirty hand which hand is going to be your clean or sterile hand. So I'm right-handed, so I've set myself up so that I can use my left hand on the suctioning and my right hand with the catheter. So right now, both my hands are sterile, and I'm able to pick this up and get it comfortably in my hand, however I want to have it. Once I touch the suction, uh, the suction um, wall suction that hooks up to this, with my left hand, I can no longer use my left hand to touch this because it is, because that hand has now been contaminated and it's so, dirty. Good. Okay. Okay. So I've got my catheter here and I'm ready to hook it up to my wall suction. So remember, I have my wall suction sitting here on the bed. So boom, now my, my hand has been contaminated. So now this is my dirty hand. So I want to go ahead and connect these. And you really got to make sure you push, guys, because otherwise, mid-suctioning, they can come apart. So you almost want to feel like a popping sensation. Yeah. That will let you know that you're all the way on the catheter. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and check my suction again and lubricate this catheter. And I'm going to do that by putting my thumb on here. When I have my thumb on here, the suction is applied to the catheter. My thumb is not on here. There's no suction happening. So I'm going to go ahead. Being very careful not to touch her catheter to anything else when she crosses over. You have to right. be very careful. So now I've got my catheter and I'm ready to suction. So we're going to go over to Miss Anita here. And you can see she has her straight collar on. And I'm going to need to move that. So I'm simply going to take with my sterile hand and hold the catheter in this hand and dangle the suction tubing while I use my contaminated hand to move the trait collar off. Okay, Miss Camby, did you need me to come in and hyperoxygenate the client yes, for you? Yes, that would be excellent, Miss Palmer. Sorry for my awful moving of the camera. Okay, so I've got my Ambu bag. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to note that this Ambu bag doesn't have a face mask on it like you saw when you did your BLS. Instead, it just has this port here, and you can see it better when we get to the lab. With the metal trachs, there's actually an adapter on it that comes to a point that fits perfectly into the metal trach opening. With the plastic trachs, this piece will fit right over. So depending on the type of trach you're using, you have to make sure you have the appropriate adapter on the Ambu bag for that. The Ambu bag itself has uh, oxygen tubing attached to it. And we're, we would hook that up to the oxygen on the wall. And then we're going to go ahead and turn the oxygen on and we're going to hyper oxygenate our client. Um, as our client takes a deep breath in, we're going to go ahead and give them a bag. And then they're going to breathe out normally. So when they take a breath in, I'm going to give them a bag. Until we get their oxygen saturation level above 94%. Right, because Ms. Palmer, would we hyperoxygenate somebody who's at 99% prior to suctioning? No. So just 94%. So I've done that for Ms. Canby, so she didn't have to have all her hands um, contaminated, so now she can move forward with the actual suctioning. Okay, well, thank you, Ms. Palmer. I appreciate your help with that. Sure.
So, when I'm getting ready to suction, it's important that you guys note we don't put suction on when we advance the catheter into the trach, only on the way out. So when I'm going to put the catheter in, I'm going to advance it until the patient coughs, because this means that it's it's time to it's a good sign of, of it's time to advance the cat or remove the catheter, and we're going to do intermittent suction on the way out. So the whole process happens fairly quickly in a patient. And what I say by intermittent suction is I'm going to go on and off with my suction here. Okay. I'm also going to kind of swirl my catheter around so that it's getting um, multiple parts of the airway. Okay. So first we're going to go ahead and put our catheter down. And you can see I don't have suction on the patient and I'm avoiding contaminating my catheter by touching around there. So can you guys see that? <coughs> and now I'm going to do suction intermittently while removing the catheter. So at this point, this catheter is not realistic because there's no sputum in it. At this point, what I would want to do is go ahead and suck up some of my sterile water here to clean my catheter. I'm also going to monitor my patient for any signs that they may, may, may need suction again. And I'm going to go ahead and put my trait collar back on so that they can have that oxygen and humidification while we're waiting. So your pass or your suction time should not be greater than 10 seconds. So you shouldn't spend more than 10 seconds suctioning your patient. And this is, we don't want to damage um, any of the mucous membranes or the fragile uh, tissue of the airway. And we also don't want to suck all their oxygen out because we're in their airway. So we only do it 10 seconds and then we'll wait a minute and we can do another set of suctioning. You're not going to do more than three passes at suctioning in one time frame. So say your patient needs suction every hour, you're not going to suction them more than three times at a at a chunk, I guess. Okay, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So should we do it again, Ms. Palmer? Sure. All right. You can see it the whole so, time I've been trying to keep my hands separate and not contaminating um, my sterile catheter. So I'm going to bring this catheter over or this camera over so they can see from this point of view how you're going down. Okay, so again, I'm going to move my trait collar. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my catheter in. So again, suction is not on. We're going to advance this catheter down. So note how she's not touching the trach at all with her fingertips. Yeah, so my... got to keep that hand sterile. That's right. And so our patient's going to cough. <laughs> Then I'm going to start hitting the intermittent suction and rotating the catheter as I pull it out. And she's kind of sliding the catheter back in her hand so that when she comes out at the end, she's not flinging the catheter around. Right. So I'm not going to touch any of the, any of the skin or the trach on the outside because if we need to use it again, it needs to stay as sterile as possible. And then again, I would go ahead and clean my catheter out. And give your patient the oxygen. Yeah, and give my patient their oxygen back. Okay, do we have any questions? No, I don't think so, Ms. Candy. Okay. So we'll talk about in class um, why a patient would have a trach, and we'll, Ms. Palmer and I both will go over the different parts of a trach um, when you're in lab, but it's important that you have an understanding of how to do the skill and if you need to take your kit apart while you're watching this video, I should have told you that at the beginning, um, or after watching this video and play with the materials, we highly recommend that you do that because it can be kind of awkward. The catheter is flexible, but it can be kind of awkward to figure out how you want it in your hand. And of course, sterile gloves always are a challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's it for today, and we look forward to seeing you in lab.